Thank you. Okay, we're on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, so I was working in the stock. I was working in the stock market, uh, and uh, I had a life full of addiction. You know, compulsive overeating, then extreme workalism, uh, other addictions as well. So, in that place, you know, that acts as uh, when the ego is that fat and inflated, when there's so many repressed feelings because I never got to feel because I was constantly using, and the, the severity of the thinking was so fast and so negative and so controlling. So you're going to be attracted to, uh, when, you, when I'm in ego, to everything that's correlated to ego. So I'll have jobs which are correlated to extreme ego, I'll have relationships, I'll be eating in a way correlated. So everything is just a correlation of the vibration I'm at, that level of disconnection from God. So every action, and as you get to the lower, the lower fields of ego, because you're cut out, cut off from the light of God, you act like a, it's like a, a, a vibratory attractor field or a magnet, so that uh, you're just uh, attracted to destruction of, and also death, unconsciously seeking suicide in all my choices. So the career that I had was in the stock market, was full of addicts, very aggressive, uh, very demanding uh, and you know it's a place where people actually die because it's such a stressful aggressive environment and full of addiction so I was in that thing and then I got the kidney failure so when you have those when you get these uh, uh, when you get you know when the ego takes you to an extreme level and you get these rock bottoms often you're facing death or or a huge or you just lose everything or you become insane or whatever that's a great that's a great thing that's a great thing, the rock bottom, because it then opens up the doorway for God. You see, because uh, when you're in, in ego, it's like it's so addictive and it's so strong. Uh, it's, like you, it's like a train that you can't get off those tracks. You know, it'll take you all the way to death and hell. So usually you need something very, very extreme and life-threatening life or to, you know, total carnage of your life before you'll have the willingness and the grace to actually be able to start momentum in the opposite direction. You know, so um, I'd had this heavenly time of spirit. So this is all on, on the thing of like finding your life purpose because you, everything that I did was coming from my ego. So you can, I can take for, for granted that that's all crap. You know, the, that, uh, but you know, not necessarily, but you know, I had that spiritual experience. I knew that a spirit, something, my life had to be spiritually based. I didn't know how and where or too much, but uh, after that, you know, I did think, oh, uh, even having that first near-death spiritual experience, I thought I shouldn't go back into that field. Maybe I'll go back into ethical fund management, where they're a bit more like, you know, green investing and whatever. But still, you know, I was just too ill. Couldn't, couldn't hack it. I was too, uh, I was too near death really to work. Now the thing with, um, so you know. Uh, I was then went on a big spiritual search because I had that near-death spiritual experience to find spirituality. And I was given a DVD of Dr. David R. Hawkins. Now, uh, that, was, that was great because that answered and his works answered a lot of material. It's like, what, where, you know, when I'm in a lot of ego and I've got a lot of things, it's like, um, I'm going to be attracted to, you know, I'm not going to be clear. I'm going to be attracted to unhealthy things. So it's okay. Uh, to take time to spiritually connect because I can only like attract things uh, to me dependent on my spiritual vibration so you know so so I could see and I also learned something really amazing and I'm starting to get these things um, and it's my member top of another video when you start to get these amazing spiritual experiences you start to see that uh, lots of grace and synchronicity comes into your life. You know, it's like the right people, the right situations, the right remedies, everything starts orchestrating when you get these jumps up into God consciousness. So, and Hawkins explained it, it's like my whole life and what shows up in my life is just a function of how spiritually connected I am to God. You know, and, and he actually explained it, you know, when I've got a really... <clears throat> When I've got a really big inflated ego, what does that mean? In, a, in an active addiction, I'm always using, so I never feel. 
So that means that the level of repressed and suppressed feelings in me is gigantic. It's like I'm a volcano of repressed feelings. You know, so that means, so to be, you know, to be going into suicidal behaviours around food and around work meant that I'd never felt any of my feelings my whole life. So my ego was like the size, of, I don't know, like the size of King Kong. Because, you know, you never feel. So that repressed feelings like a pressure cooker. And all those negative thoughts. And when you've got so many extreme repressed feelings from years of addiction, and when you're getting suicidal, that means that your ego is like, you know, it's, 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 it's gigantic, the amount of repressed feelings that you've never experienced. And, and also, as you go down with those repressed feelings, you're like tuning in uh, to a radio frequency of negative thinking. You see, so you're attracting from the collective consciousness, you know, the most negative and destructive thoughts, and you're being attracted to the most negative and destructive situations in work, in food, in relationships. So it's like a magnet. When, you, when you're, you've got so much repressed feelings that you've never felt out, you know, your thoughts, you'll be picking up from a radio station, from the collective, the most negative and destructive types of thinking, and you'll be attracted to the most negative and destructive situations. So, and I'm answering the question about getting a job. So, you know, finding your life purpose. Well, while I'm there, you know, the main thing for me is not to be thinking about a job because I only think about jobs based on how fat my ego is. So I really need to jump up my spiritual connection to start getting, getting in tune with higher levels of what my spirit would express in life. You know, because a lot of, this is the thing is like, what I realized from uh, Hawkins research was actually thinking is useless, trying to be clever and you, my thinking is only a reflection of my spiritual connection and nothing else. So, you know, when I have a bad spiritual connection, all my thinking is bad. Yeah. So there's no point in like, oh my God, my life's in a mess. What should I do? Let me think about it and, and think up a good idea because thinking when I'm disconnected is insane thinking. So. And if I want to get my life purpose, I have to clear my ego out of the way. And, it, and the life purpose that comes to me is the vibration to which I can connect to God. So if I clear a little bit of my ego, my thinking will get better, my inspiration, my direction, and, my, and the careers that will come my way will be better. But if I clear more of my ego, I'll go up to the next wavelength up. So I'll be on a higher, you know, I'll tune in. So like the bottom vibrations are like shame and guilt. You know, and then you're, you're, you know, guilt means you're going to attract, um, you, you deserve punishment or shame, you don't deserve to live. So you'll be attracting circumstances and thinking up of ideas for jobs and careers on that radio frequency. So if I clear that away and we're going into the various things we do here, cancelling beliefs, feeling the feelings, the observer, to clear all that crap out of the way from the ego, then you go up to the next frequency and you'll have the next inspiration. And uh, if you clear up more of the ego, you'll go to the next thing. So it's the thing of like, the way I got into it, and I know um, it's a big topic, and I'm just going to share my experience strength and strength around it, is that I had absolute faith that God can do everything if I can get the connection to God going. All miracles are possible. Mm -hmm. And actually, my, my most important thing, if I'm worried about work and career and what I should be doing with my life, is just to keep clearing the stuff out of the way and it will come. The guidance will eventually come at the right time. It's not so much, um, and people, you know, so as I was doing that, um, so clearing away the feelings, and I'll just expl explain my journey, and I, I knew, um, and we do it in the Course of Miracles, it was explained to me that, you know, when you're connected to, uh, the more you're connected to God consciousness, like everything will come your way effortlessly, like synchronistically, the miracles will be shown. And uh, so in my own journey, I just thought, well, the only thing I'm going to do is, um, is just uh, clear up my stuff. And I'd had these experiences, and I'm going to share them, and I know most people who've done spiritual work will, will recognize this. Is no, whenever you have a, a great spiritual experience, you, you might find like the next week, every, you know, all the buses arrive on time, all the right people show up, um, you start getting money coming in, all these synchronicities happen. So the, the main thing really is not, is just how can I jump up my spiritual connection to the highest level so that I can start bringing in the things. And, and my own journey, and it was this thing of like, because it was life and death for me, it was like, 
And I knew that I had these deep spiritual experiences. I knew that I just have to connect to that power to the highest level I can and everything will, will come my way. And when I'm at lower vibrations, that's, um, I'm going to be divorced, not, not necessarily stop, but you know, it won't be as good. So I just had this absolute thing, it's just don't worry about the money, don't worry about the work, just keep doing the spiritual work and things will come my way. And I was quite, um, and it was life and death, and I have to say this because it's my experience and I just want to be real with people. Um, I find that when you, when you pursue spiritual work and spiritual connection from a, a dark place, you get tested a lot on your faith. You know, uh, things like money, uh, people's disapproval, uh, loss of friends, uh, you know, or, you know, people want, so you get all of these tests and um, I had a lot, a lot of uh, testing, you know, around money and fear and stuff, but I knew that God would be the answer. And I knew for me anyway, I just showed myself, it's like, if I do, and it's a bit like, if I pursue connecting to God 100%, and I'm just talking, I'm not just necessarily for other people, but I knew it would be God's responsibility to take care of me. You know, I'll just do it 100%. And, and you get all your fears come up, you know, because every time your ego comes up with something, it's like abandon your spiritual connection and your spiritual program and your spiritual routine because you're in fear and go sort out the problem with your mental solution and then when you feel safe because you've sorted out your problem then go back to spirituality mm. and I knew like because mm. it was life and death and I'd had that spiritual experience I didn't want to do that so what I found was that if I pursue God 100% like all your demons and terrors and fears will come up to be faced you know and um, uh, so um, so anyway, I was doing this stuff, like when I was, uh, uh, initially I was on benefits and, uh, you know, I was on a dialysis machine and I had really bad health, but I wanted to go to meetings and I remember my uh, mother was saying, like, don't go to these 12-step uh, meetings, you know, because the first, the first level of clearing your egos, I would say, if we, look, you know, Hawkins was uh, Bill, Bill Sponsee, but he's also got this uh, capacity to see the levels of vibrations of things with muscle testing. And, the 12 steps is what, what I call the entry level spirituality, you know. So I always liken it to like your O-levels in spirituality is to get your 12 steps under your belt. So you now have your O-levels, so I don't know. I wish I knew the colours of the, of the karate belt, it'd be like, I don't know, your brown belt or something, I don't know. But so you, you want to get the basics of spirituality out and that will take you up. And 12 steps, I did have addiction problems, and 12 steps is the basics. And that's just to stop your gross acting out on addictions. And that will take you to a certain level of spiritual connection and will stop addiction. So that was the first thing, I was going to do my, my 12 steps. The next level up, which I call the A-levels, to clear out your ego is to do the Course in Miracles. So, um, and you can do them in parallel as long as you, you know the differences. So the, um, the 12 steps so the 12 steps will, even if you do the 12 steps, your career choice is going to be a lot better. Yeah. And if you do the Course in Miracles, now the 12 steps is based on the idea that uh, it's what's called a dualistic notion of spirituality, which means that the me, there is a me that prays to God to remove my defects. So it takes into account that, that there's a separate me praying to a separate God to remove my defects. And that... Uh, from from uh, uh, from no spirituality, that's a huge step up uh, in, in in getting a connection to a power greater than yourselves. So that that's really great. When you get to the level, of, so that's you know you need to get that as a basic grasp, because the next level up would be the Course in Miracles. Now the Course in Miracles is um, gearing towards what's called a non-dualistic spiritual teaching, which means it's getting. It's getting to the core of totally deleting the whole basis of the ego as an illusion. So, <clears throat> so we're dissolving the idea, if we totally delete the ego, we'll be one with God. There won't be a separate me needing to pray to a separate God, because we're also dismantling the whole idea of a separate me within the Course in Miracles. So that's the next level up. And, uh, and that's what I call, it's, it's semi-dualistic, but it's the next level up from 12 steps, and then it takes you all the way to the non-dual, to the oneness, to, to the infinite, to the eternal. 
So that's the next level up. And then you get the teachers of enlightenment, such as Dr. David R. Hawkins or Muji, or you could say Eckhart Tolle, which will take you to, to the last level, just to be in that infinite place, and where you've, you've disentangled your prior identification with the, with the idea that the ego is the sense of self. You see, you totally dissolve that when you get to the highest levels. So those are the three levels up. And depending on where you're at, going towards that God consciousness, or the eternal now, or the power of now, or, or the, the cosmos would call it the holy instant, or the oneness instant, the instant when there is no separation. So as we go up those things, then so for, in relationship to career, you know, as you go up those vibratory scale, you know, the career will manifest based on what vibration you're at. Now, just to explain my journey, I just pursued that. And things like my mother was saying, well, you know, I'm going to make you homeless if you carry on doing the spiritual work. You just stop doing the spiritual work. And then I carried on doing the spiritual work. And I had this test. I just wanted to share it. And then it was like, as I pursued the spiritual work, even at the fear of becoming homeless, I found that it, everything resolved at the last minute if I just carried on into the fear, but didn't stop doing my spiritual practice as the number one thing to connect to God. So that, that would happen. Then um, I remember I started getting so well doing my spiritual work that I got a, a transplant and I came off the dialysis machine, so I had to come off the benefits. And then I thought, well, I'm still going to do my spiritual practice, 12 steps, Course in Miracles, all, all this time. Like I spent so much time doing spirituality and I wouldn't put that second to a career, so I'd find a part-time career. And then, and then suddenly, it's like I wasn't back down, and then my father offered me a part-time job, and that was great uh, in his b and And I still, I, would, I, I put that last, the business, and doing my spiritual work. And uh, I had a, a sponsee that I was helping in a fellowship, uh, help, helping with the food. And, um, and we were able to, we were a really good partner to be able to do muscle testing or kinesiology. And what I'm sharing about doing the work is just keep doing the spiritual work and grace will show you what work you need to do. And I was just doing this muscle testing with her. Uh, muscle te I'll, I'll talk a little bit later at some other point. People don't know what muscle testing. But you can find out from the universe things that you need to know, like what's good for you and what's not good for you by doing muscle testing. Does everyone know what muscle testing can be? Okay, so very, very quickly, muscle testing or kinesiology there's a, a spiritual mechanism whereby, and it's a, it's a very, very popular uh, discipline all over the world. You can go to find practitioners, pick up your yellow pages and you find loads of practitioners all over the place. It originated in the 1960s from a guy called Dr. Goodhart, who was a chiropractor. And he found that people's muscles became strong or weak, dependent upon uh, uh, what was good for them or not good for them. So let's say you hold uh, an organic apple and you test the muscle strength in the body, you'd find that the body would be strong. And if you put rat poison on the body and you tested the muscles, they'd go weak. So you could find out what's good for you and what's not good for you just by using the body as an indicator for what's good and what's not good. But later on, they found it wasn't just that. You could actually, it's like the whole universe is like a, is like a gauge. And any time you say anything that's based in truth, or a statement of truth. It's like the universe is like a, a reservoir of all information from all time, and it's present everywhere in every instant. So I could find out in this instant, if I got a, a, a pure enough spiritual connection to the universe, I could find out anything from the past, the future, or anything, uh, and whether it's based in truth or not. So that information is available. So you can find out basically anything about everything, so long as you, and you have to ask for permission. So anything that, when you make a statement like, um, you know, uh, Adolf Hitler was, uh, was an integrous person, you could ask that question, and that information resides in the universe, and your muscles will stay strong or weak, depending on what that, whether that's true. If you hold a picture of Adolf Hitler, um, and we can, you know, you can try this at home, um, uh, you know, hold a picture of Adolf Hitler and test your muscle strength as you make a big picture of him. And if you're connected up rightly, if you're wired up, you have to be spiritually connected to do this. You can't be, you know, just binging out on food. You won't be a clear channel. You'll find that your, arm, your muscles will all go weak just to hold a picture. You hold a, a picture of, like, the Dalai Lama and then sit, check your muscles and be strong. Or say, like, this job is good for me, working for BT, and, and you'll check, you'll go strong. You can find out everything once you're spiritually connected. 
So um, anyway, so we're just checking with her and I needed to find out career stuff. I go, what am I going to do with my life? I'm not, definitely not going to go out in the stock market. That's like death. You know, I've got to find something in tune with my spirit. And she said to me, look, you should, you should like teach spiritual stuff, be a spiritual teacher or a coach or something. I thought, you know, that's not a career. <laughs> you know, but anyway, so I just checked it out on the arm and it came out, yes. So I thought, okay, fair enough. Then, uh, and so it gave me permission. So those things come. And also with the, I just wanted to share this thing. You know, I was working with my father's B&B &B at the time. And uh, I, was, I was just doing lots of meetings and lots of spiritual work and not really focusing on the, on the business and just trying to get my spiritual vibration to go as high as possible. And then after doing that for two years, putting spirituality and clearing my, clearing my ego out of the way, then I got someone who just came in and took over, took over the business. And I was earning about 800 to 1,500 a month in that business. And it's because I wasn't hardly ever there. And, and we got someone to take the business over for 2300 a month. And then, so I, what I found was like, by putting my, all this time into spiritual work, it was like I ended up getting more and more money and doing less and less work, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I wanted to share. It's like, because if you like tune in to what you're supposed to do, and often it may seem like totally not possible. Uh, and and uh, and I found that any time you pers and when you start to do things when you're in resonance, you'll be tested a lot in a lot of different ways. I found and uh, you go. Th I went through periods of great fear uh, around finances, <laughs> around doing what I should be doing. And what I found was that you go through these like fears, and it's almost like you're going to lose everything. And then you, and you just keep your spiritual, and what I found is if I kept my spiritual practice up, and it'd be like, I'm just about to lose everything, it's not going to work. And then at the last minute, everything works out fine. And it's like, I always, almost intuit, it's like God sort of saying, are you going to back out? You know, are you going to back out in fear? Um, and when I don't back out in fear, it's like at the last minute, in every one of these things, I was going to be homeless. Or, um, or you know, or... I'm not going to make enough money or whatever it is and I still put the spiritual practice first and then you get tested and, and you get to limits and you think it's not going to work and then it works out. I don't know if that's explained properly or very well but that was my experience. Um, also I found as well that sometimes it's like uh, yeah I did do B jobs, I did do jobs that uh, that didn't compromise my spiritual work but also gave money for a while. And while I was doing the eight things I wanted to do, and the money fellowships as well. So, so that's okay, but the, the whole point I did was to keep on clearing out the ego through the spiritual tools as a primary thing. And you get these big fears and your work comes, you know, with, with work it'll depend, a lot of it, like you might not know for a while what your right job is. You just, as, I, as you clear out this spiritual stuff, um, Signs will come your way, people will say things or opportunities will suddenly arise at a certain point. And you just have to intuit that. If you're able to do muscle testing or know someone can do muscle, you can check it. Like, should I be a spiritual teacher? You can check your muscle strength. Or uh, check it out with some of your friends. And sometimes they'll say, oh, I could really see you doing that. You know, I think you should be doing that. And now I found with myself, like, I really wanted to do that, but I didn't think that was a valid thing to do. But people around you may know as well that that's just in line with what what you should be doing. Also, uh, it's coming more from your heart, from your spirit. I think there is a practical thing of, of you know, they can sometimes be doing uh, work as a bee job in, in between. So I hope that that sheds some light. Uh, it's not really a clear answer. It's more like as you release and go up the vibrations, answers come along the way. Mm. And also when you get guidance on what you need to do, sometimes you're tested a lot. Will I make enough money? Will it work out? But sometimes it's like, um, so I just found that in my experience, you're tested around money and fear of money. Because I think that was a big thing for me. I think it's a big thing for m many of us. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you.